So without further ado, I'm delighted um, to um, welcome and introduce um, Aaron Rees, um, who is the Head of Curriculum and Wellbeing at Carmarthenshire County Council. Um, Aaron's going to be sharing with us the story of how his local authority formulated a wellbeing promotion strategy and developed a programme to support school leaders and the wider workforce. So over to you, Aaron. Okay, thank you very much, Jen, for that uh, introduction. And uh, I really appreciate the opportunity to um, share uh, the journey that our colleagues and uh, uh, our schools and uh, learners have uh, embarked upon, uh, well, for a, a few years uh, now, um, but certainly uh, brought into sharper focus over the last few months. So um, I, I'm one of the heads of service in, uh, uh, in the Department for Education and Children, and um, my role has uh, sort of expanded uh, of late um, and, and the well-being ac uh, aspect has really sort of taken off um, and uh, that's something I, I professionally and personally applaud and uh, hope that'll uh, come through in the presentation. Uh, our learning communities, um, by that what I mean is uh, all our settings, primary, secondary, special uh, and all who work in those communities, our leaders, our teaching staff, our support staff as well. So if I take you on a little uh, journey, hopefully uh, the, you will find some uh, res resonance with a few of the things we've been working on. Um, I suppose as people who are interested in education uh, and uh, well-being, uh, I, I, I doubt whether anybody would be uh, at odds with this uh, statement that people are at the heart of all that we do. And uh, that, that's certainly um, true for a school leader um, and um, you know on a day-to-day -day basis the the number of interactions a school leader has with uh, parents pupils and uh, fellow uh, professionals is uh, uh, you know quite substantial and um, you know being a, an ex-head myself the, um, the 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 honor and privilege of leading a school uh, is something that uh, really really um, makes it worthwhile for us and it's, it's that pleasure and uh, and an and, and honor really to work with dedicated professionals who are committed, who are inspiring, who are in, resilient, and all the other words we can see in this little uh, graphic here. And I'm sure that uh, lasting, um, you know, memories and friendships have been forged by working in a school environment. And keeping that heart beating strongly and surely is something uh, of vital importance to us all. So I'll take you on a little uh, journey through our pre-COVID thinking, and I'll try to get, get, get through fairly sharpish on that one, and then uh, have a closer look at the pandemic itself and what we've done in respect of the recovery curriculum and the support uh, we're offering for school leaders and the wider staff body before I sort of draw some thoughts to a close. Um, in terms of Carmarthenshire, for the, those of you who are uh, not uh, acquainted with the county, it's often described as a microcosm of Wales. We have our rural areas, our wonderful uh, rural areas. We have also our market towns, um, what you could call administrative towns like Carmarthen, and in inverted commas, our, our industrial towns such as Llanelli. We also have a post-industrial landscape in the Ammon and Gwendraith Valleys, where the anthracite coal mining has um, um, declined and come to an end, and then there are some regeneration issues in those communities. So suffice to say, we have the, uh, the privileged and the, uh, uh, the disadvantaged uh, living within the same um, uh, uh, county boundary. And parts of our um, uh, larger towns are more akin to inner city features in terms of deprivation and challenge. Makes it a very interesting place to work, work with. And it's uh, my absolute pleasure to work with around 27,000 learners in 94 primary schools, uh, 12 secondary schools, three special schools, and one uh, nursery. Uh, you can see the scale of our sort of teaching complement and our uh, teaching assistants. And we're an integrated department, education and children, which means that we have social workers, youth workers, educational psychologists, education professionals, and so on. And that integrated uh, ethos has been um, arguably helpful for us in shaping this well-being strategy and approach um, 
because it, it has really enriched our thinking um, and uh, cross fertilized our perspectives as one team here in Carmarthenshire. So um, again, for those of you who are aficionados of policy, uh, the influential, uh, influential Mind Over Matter report came out in uh, 2018. Uh, and it was talking about the missing middle, those young people who are maybe um, at the cusp of ac having access to specialist services, but not quite making the grade or meeting the criteria. And then you have mainstream schools then um, really struggling to, to accommodate their, their needs. There were a, um, a myriad of other policy directives which have taken us along the wellbeing journey in Wales, not least education in Wales, our national mission. And the third enabling objective of that is, in fact, to uh, promote the, um, the well-being, equity and inclusion of our school communities. So um, in, in that policy backdrop, we, 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 we try to sort of shape and mould our uh, thinking and also sort of um, uh, building up empirical evidence from things like school counselling. This graphic very quickly shows that uh, uh, boys and girls uh, you know, reports and present with family issues, relationships, uh, and anxiety and, and, and stress uh, is common to, to both sexes. Um, Self-worth, again, same, perhaps a little bit more acute in, in, in um, females and the, the boys then, you know, uh, presenting more with behaviour related. So we were building up a picture from the ground up, as it were, uh, some of these trends in counselling as well. We can see anxiety and stress on, on a very steep uh, curve. Uh, possibly exponential there. Um, other things here like suicide ideation and um, self-harm, uh, you know, are, 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 are present. And we're trying to keep an eye on that. It's, it fluctuates quite a bit. But uh, as you can might imagine, um, that is an area of interest for us as well. Um, professionals are telling us about waiting times for specialist services. Um, budgets always come up, don't they? Counselling for younger Pupils are uh, uh, younger than six years of uh, year six, and we're now sort of counselling in, in primary schools uh, year five and below on a case by case basis. So we were building up, um, you know, triangulating the information as we were going along. In in in, an eight, in a typical uh, county council in Wales, you'd probably find um, various strategies, and we have our uh, wellbeing strategy corporately. I will talk about the equity and wellbeing strategy shortly uh, as well. And, um, you know, there are other things there, uh, our behaviour and engagement strategy and so on, which all feed into our approach. Uh, the multi-agency side of it as well, where we're looking at vulnerable learners across uh, other departments like uh, adult services, for those youngsters who are transitioning into adult services, and also looking at the, um, you know, uh, um, the, the very vulnerable learners um, with agencies like health and so on. Again, You'd, you'd see this type of uh, approach really in any um, uh, LA of, of, of a given size. Uh, I would reference here, for example, our Healthy Schools Service, uh, who do a tremendous amount of work, our education support and advisors, our counselling uh, uh, um, colleagues uh, who I've already referenced, and so on. And again, you know, the wider support services um, are referenced here. So I, uh, one of my roles, I think, was to sort of bring all this together. And then we had sort of cross-cutting approaches, uh, person-centred planning being a feature of um, particularly of additional learning needs. Restorative practice and uh, ACE awareness is uh, certainly um, we've applied that in youth justice. We've applied that in our higher end be, uh, behaviour and engagement centres as well. Um, likewise, emotion coaching, trauma informed practice and so on. Uh, towards the, the end of the list there, we can see things which have featured more um, more recently in, in mainstream, mindfulness, growth mindset and so on, uh, yoga sessions in schools and, and all sorts of other ways of keeping our mainstream pupils um, as stable and happy as possible. In our discussions, caring for the carers, um, you know, started to emerge as a major theme. Uh, and uh, similar to an aeroplane journey, uh, 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 heaven forbid, if the oxygen mask comes down, you know, you're advised to help yourself before you help the next person. And I think that is true of, of our approach here. Uh, so the, the well-being of school leaders and, and, and teachers and uh, teaching assistants um, will not only have ramifications for the pupils positively, but also, um, you know, we want a profession which is one 
uh, is a profession of choice for people that we retain and recruit into that profession and people have a really profitable and uh, enriching uh, career whilst uh, 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 working in school. So I'll come back to caring for the carers slightly later on. In terms of building the evidence base as well, we um, uh, did in fact um, 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 attend the conference uh, put on by education support in Cardiff. And uh, at the time, the teacher wellbeing index was coming through uh, three quarters of our uh, uh, teachers feeling uh, stressed. I, I, I probably hazard the guess that it's higher at this current time, three quarters of the uh, uh, people uh, surveyed not being able to switch off, people wanting to leave the profession in large uh, numbers and the workload issue um, highly, highly uh, significant. So um, we were building that up and these reports were also informative for us. Again, um, you know, that, that was coming, that was bringing that back into sharper focus for as well, care for the head and the SLTs. So we had a few conferences. Our first um, look for into the curriculum on the 1st of May, 2019, we unpacked the, the health and wellbeing area of learning first and foremost. It wasn't mathematics, it wasn't languages we unpacked, it was health and wellbeing. The Missing Mid Middle Conference um, was targeted specifically about those sort of um, youngsters in the shadows, uh, you know, in, in those gray areas uh, that may be suffering quietly and um, um, getting underneath people's radar. And then we had our first uh, um, staff wellbeing conference just prior to lockdown. We have worked with our region. The region have been able to bring in experts such as Neil Frood and Robin Banerjee. Uh, and we've been working uh, with other initiatives um, which are working with uh, and, and, and targeted towards um, uh, vulnerable learners. So the equity and well-being strategy was um, sort of in the crucible of all that was formulated and we had a strap line there that the, the well-being of our staff and young people is integral to our thinking and uh, commands the centre stage as it were. So I think that was the foundation for us really uh, to take the learning forward and the provision for uh, uh, the professional uh, staff as well. So underneath that, um, you know, we had this sort of notion that um, when the basic needs of pupils and staff are uh, catered for, learners are more predisposed to learn and the positive attitudes um, hopefully can uh, make them as good as they can be uh, in that regard. It's, it's a simple mantra, but um, for, those of us, for those of you who like uh, delving in theory, it was about um, uh, Maslow before Bloom for us in Carmarthenshire. And that is a sort of ex exemplified in a, a Maslow-esque um, diagram here where we're building up the blocks in a school environment, starting with the learning uh, environment. And, you know, for me as a head and, for, uh, and uh, as an officer, uh, it's important that young people are happy to come to school, look forward to coming to school, have, um, you know, a free from... Um, and any sort of um, oppression, uh, a warm, a, a looked after, a welcomed, something, somebody looking out for them every day. And if we can satisfy and say it, those um, basic needs, we can then build the relationships. And again, here, the big words would be uh, uh, trust, uh, respect, learner voice and teacher voice um, and value. Uh, 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 on everybody's contribution. And I think adult to adult relationships well modeled, pupil to pupil and, and pupil to adult, those relationships are another fundamental building block. And then that gives us that capacity to learn then, you know, the, the noise in the system for them as human beings then is um, suppressed so that they can concentrate on their learning. In terms of, of another little model, we sort of um, worked up again, not rocket science, but um, you know, for every learner we have and every member of staff, we have a universal offer, the school curriculum, the new area of learning, uh, the pastoral curriculum, um, a training menu, which needs to be uh, um, in everybody's toolbox uh, as a whole school approach would be advocated at this level. We'd also be sort of measuring um, uh, here uh, some baseline measurements of emotional uh, conditions and states. And Mel Melinsko said, isn't he, in the past, measure what you value, not value what you measure. And I think that uh, resonates with us here in Carmarthenshire. Then going up the pyramid, 
uh, for some pupils and, uh, um, you know, a more extended uh, targeted intervention is there for us. And we'd be building up our extended training menu for Elenco's and um, uh, other specialists in, in mainstream. And at the highest end of the, or, or at the apex of the triangle, we have those complex needs and the specialist intervention for those youngsters who are really, really deregulated and um, have heightened needs uh, there. So we're just building in this strategy uh, a few sort of conceptual models to help us along. In our um, conferences, and I won't dwell on this, we were looking at other sort of cherry picking some um, some other pieces of work. The 10 steps towards school staff well-being is referenced there from the Anna Foy Freud Foundation. Great dreams, 10 ways to happier living and so on. And uh, you're probably getting an impression of me now as a magpie here. Yeah, I'm not an academic, but uh, you know what, what I try to do is to harvest what's out there and apply what we feel is applicable and, uh, and, 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 res uh, and relevant for us in Carmarthenshire. So again, it's not uh, um, confined to Wales. Um, remarkably uncannily, teachers in Australia and the Southern Hemisphere are also uh, working on this um, uh, issue as well. And they're, they're coming up with similar solutions as well. So anyway, uh, that was all happening. And then the pandemic strikes. Now, our education support advisors um, have sort of um, given us a, a, a little flavour here that uh, the, the general well-being of the pupils is better than expected and have, um, you know, good attitudes to learning generally. That said, you know, those quiet um, pupils who are sitting there, they seem to be concentrating, but they may have a myriad of unresolved issues in their minds um, there. So we have to guard uh, against that and, and plan for it. Because I think, uh, you know, not all has been revealed yet in the next two, six months will certainly reveal more. And that will and, and reveal more with staff as well. Parents have been more anxious, understandably, around COVID um, safety. A few pupils have been tired and lethargic. Um, routines have been impacted. Physical um, um, uh, fitness has had a, um, a, a bit of a, a rough time uh, with a number of our pupils as well. And you can see as well the vulnerable agenda, not surprisingly, they're coming through. And then many leaders are concerned about um, the, the well-being of their staff. And almost all note that um, their workload is, um, well, um, all, all overwhelming uh, here in, in terms of sort of all the operational guidance and trying to keep everybody safe. So that, our, our education support advisors kindly uh, got that for us. So um, we uh, were giving le learning guidance on July 13th from the government. In advance of that, we'd looked at um, some work around the accelerated learning um, gently and, and gingerly uh, assessing the fitness of learners in a non-threatening manner uh, in terms of uh, that, the, 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 the literacy and numeracy uh, framework and the digital competency framework came through strongly as cross-cutting skills in a remodelled curriculum uh, um, with, with the uh, national curriculum being disapplied. And the four purposes of the new curriculum and rich learning around that have also been useful. And then um, as a precursor to that on uh, uh, June 22nd, uh, the Welcome Backpack for Schools, the Health and Happiness Program, uh, was kindly overseen by a colleague of mine, Angara Jones, and um, we did have in that um, in that pack um, some uh, wonderful uh, resources based on the five ways to well well-being. Angara and um, school improvement colleagues worked with educational psychologists in this uh, on this uh, piece of work and, and and the five ways to well-being. Apologies here, this is a, a Welsh medium slide, but this is for the foundation phase and is an activity on friendship. And you can see the different colours around the descriptions for the, um, uh, for the um, activity. So the pink one is um, the chain of friendship. So there's an activity there. There's another colour which addresses another aspect of the, of the five levers, was, was involved with making a, a mural. There was another one on music in green and so on. So you can see that the five areas are covered here in this foundation phase um, uh, learning plan. Very simple uh, there. And again, for key stages three and four, it went right up to key stage four. Uh, we have some work here on the uh, outdoor area. And again, the different colors uh, suggest to us that uh, the blue is connect, the, the, the green is keep learning and so on and so forth. And you can see um, various activities back to nature mindfulness in the in, in the outdoors and so on there 
So the health and happiness program has been a, a you know a, a major milestone in terms of that sort of recovery curriculum support, which was given an extra boost then in on um, uh, September twenty second when Professor Barry Carpenter, Professor of Mental Health in Oxford Brooks, and Matthew, his son, who's a, who's a head teacher in England, came together. A great combination, of father and son, uh, marrying academic and um, school practice in in one um, sort of. Um, delivery and again Barry and Matthew talked about the five losses, losses to routine, structure, friendships and I think we've had tearful reunions in schools with youngsters seeing each other for the first time and I think we, we've underestimated the social aspect of schooling uh, but it's been brought into sharp focus for us. So opportunities and freedoms have also been losses. The, 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 the four consequences then, a sense of bereavement, um, this, uh, attachment issues and the anxieties and traumas uh, as well. So again, you know, we found it worthwhile uh, and would commend to others uh, Barry's work on the five losses and the consequences. With Matthew then coming in as a school practitioner on the five levers to recovery. Relationships, I've mentioned before, I've also mentioned community, a transparent curriculum co-constructed uh, as well with learners. Metacognition has, uh, comes through as well, and that's one of the sort of six uh, planks from the certain trust around uh, accelerated learning and catch up and making use of the outdoor space and, and other spaces there. So again, I would um, uh, firmly recommend um, Barry and uh, Matthew's work to you if you haven't seen it already. So um, moving to support for school uh, leaders. Um, I'll just flick through the Welsh slides here. So um, we had the focus group of head teachers uh, 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 earlier in the month. Um, some of the issues they come up with is this idea that uh, there's a lack of respite at the moment, constantly on duty. The phone might ring at 11 o'clock in the evening with a, with a, a, a contact uh, trace and so on. So the lack of respite 24 seven, you know, four fifths of their time being uh, expended on operational COVID matters. The cumulative effect of stress as other stresses haven't been offloaded and, and worked through to conclusion. Our head teachers and school leaders and school staff are on their knees at the moment. They're very tired. Uh, thank heavens it's, all, it's almost half term and uh, they really need to uh, have that break. Information overload, you know, and it's been a function of everybody's uh, inclination to try to help and perhaps we've produced uh, too much and um, maybe not uh, prioritised. Fear of getting something wrong, you know, in the enormity of keeping everybody safe with a largely unknown foe. You know a little bit more about COVID now, but the track and trace and how these um, contacts are coming through in school is a new experience for all. <clears throat> this is interesting on grieving for loss of school and education as it was. Well, you know, we, 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 we're hopeful that we will get back to that sort of state at some stage. What's been working well? Uh, uh, someone to listen. Support from chair and vice governors, I'll reference later. Um, short, sharp bursts in, in our regular virtual meetings with heads. That uh, peer network as well has come through. Making time to switch off, absolutely vital. Spending time with family, uh, friends, uh, and also with pupils and staff safely gives you that grounding, that perspective, according to our head teachers. And then the additional support um, uh, being suggested here, what needs... Uh, there, you can read those on your screen. Uh, there, um, informal groups. Um, this is this this bullet at the top here. Schools um, don't know what uh, needs to be put to one side to put on the back burner. Um, so we need a steer on the priorities. And I think um, secondary colleagues would argue, you know, about announcements around um, uh, exams for next year. And I, I believe the minister will do so shortly. So that will be much much looked forward to and welcomed. So again, you know, um, exemplar and generic policies and so on, which we've been producing at a rate of knots for them and the Welsh Government have been doing the same. So um, in terms of a, of a general menu for school leaders, I've already uh, referenced the focus group and the focus group will continue meeting so that we're building this provision with our head teachers, not to them, uh, and and uh, and so on. So there, there is that co-construction. Uh, we've had well well-being drop-in sessions for head teachers in the summer term, and we've also had um, ones planned now for this term after half term. 
and we we'll have those informal drop-ins, um, no set agenda, but just to sort of talk through a few issues as a, as a, as, a, as a group of peers, uh, and uh, I think that'll uh, be beneficial. The peer support network again, relatively early days here because it's developed from the managing mental health and workplace training we put it on, and again. You know, there is a peer support network as a head. I had the number of head teachers I'd routinely phone and they'd phone me and we'd support each other. But maybe we're formalizing this a little bit more around well-being now and some of those things we were, weren't uh, so good at talking about in the past. Uh, EWASC, the employee well-being, uh, oh, I've skipped, sorry, the well-being champion, nominating someone on the staff uh, as a well-being lead. Doesn't have to be the head or, the, or an SLT, but someone who, who can look after that and coordinating staff well-being and there are fantastic tips uh, on on school staff um, uh, uh, meetings and so on um, we're having a series of five minute mindfulness sessions uh, during staff briefings next week and so on in Carmarthenshire so um, coming on to the employee well-being advice and support centre this is a step once removed from occupational health you don't have to be referred to this service but you you, you can um, volunteer yourself into this uh, provision and it just sort of maybe is that support mechanism just short of a formal referral to occupational health. And it has been um, um, used um, quite, um, you know, uh, you know, significantly uh, corporately. And we, we have school staff who have also uh, been involved in, in that. The local authorities intranet uh, uh, page, which I'll show you later. And then the training, we've got a couple of e-learning modules mental health at work and so on managing mental health in the workplace uh, an ACAS course there uh, which we've uh, uh, filled uh, four or five times now so we're running it I think a half a dozen times at least and then the governor training on um, September the 8th we had um, a specific session for governors on head teacher well-being went down well with the governors and some of the head teachers have come back to us saying that they've had benefits I had four um, <clears throat> chairs of governors as a head each one was different, unique in, in their own way. But at times when I was under the cosh, uh, they really helped me pull me through. So that relationship with the governor is vital. Again, I'm not an academic, as I said before, but, uh, you know, we have tried to sort of gather together a, a bit of a typology here, you know, on, on the on the self-care and regulation on the personal side and, and techniques around st stress management. Th different things, different uh, work for different people. Those relationships I've mentioned already, Chair, peers and so on. Work routines, the moral purpose of what we do as school leaders and, and involved in education. You know, why did we come to the profession in the first place? Um, that, that, uh, that desire to make a difference to young people's uh, life chances and prospects. I think if we can tune in back to that, that's useful. Again, having a plan, the culture and the tone you set in the school, uh, coaching, uh, voice, agency and so on, you can see there. Again, the external networks bringing in specialists like Oki Health. Uh, teacher union has been very good. We have very constructive meetings with our union colleagues who are, who are really on point with, with um, staff well-being. And you can see uh, the other support mechanism on the corporate side. I showed that uh, table earlier. Sean Walker, uh, our health and uh, well-being co corporate coordinator and Gemma Seaman, who is a colleague who works on mental health, have been really helpful for us. This is our internet site then on health and well-being. Here you can see that there are all sorts of other things on the tabs, guidance for managers and teachers, lifestyle advice and so on. So that's been a rich repository of, of support for our um, uh, staff corporately in the county. So I'm drawing towards an end now. And um, again, uh, we, wouldn't, we wouldn't purport to be in any way perfect. And I'm sure many of the local authorities will have put on similar provision to our own. But we try to keep um, on, on track uh, in, in respect of the work we were starting to shape up before the pandemic, play what's in front of us then in the, um, in the uh, uh, pandemic. It's been a uh, lockdown, it's been end-to-end -end stuff, uh, really. And uh, obviously we try to sort of strategize moving forward as well. So in terms of the challenges, you know, none of us are, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, insurmountable here. Uh, we've tried our best to provide a comprehensive package of support. Integrated working, I think, has um, really helped. Um, 
uh, as part of a strategy and trying to keep some focus. So we would propose that as some merits of what we're doing. Again, um, in terms of the challenges, uh, it is early days with some of the initiatives and we hope six months down the line to have more evaluative um, sort of um, evidence around uh, what we've been putting in place. But there is no magic wand. We're all human beings and no single all embracing answer here. So that brings us back to the typology, perhaps and uh, a suite of um, approaches for our for our uh, school staff. So messages have been slow in coming, and we, we, we you know we, we we've um, yeah tried to build protocols and policies that didn't exist before um, at a, a massive rate of knots, and trying to work as as uh, carefully and correctly as we can, as well. And I think we do need to to give more steer around the priorities in education at the moment. So. Um, Next steps: um, the Education Support Advisor Program. Um, they've got a they've got a, a good strategy, a great strategy. And Harad uh, Jones has been involved with that, in bringing that together. Exemplar Health and Wellbeing Strategy for Schools seems to have gone down well. Um, again, we need to do more on on that sort of um, staff uh, senior leader program. Develop the recovery curriculum uh, further, and we're going to be looking at the five levers in more depth in the next uh, few weeks and um, obviously work more with the consortium. So um, to conclude, I think, uh, you know, we can have a half glass, uh, glass half full and a half empty mentality here. And, you know, everybody has their own sort of uh, view on this one. If you like uh, Corporal Jones, and you're as old as me and remember him uh, shouting, don't panic, uh, although he was panicking himself, uh, poor Dab. Uh, and he's not a prime example, really, but, um, you know, um, Try not to panic uh, there and the half glass full and Fraser, his sidekick, coming out with his uh, we're doomed uh, um, mantra there, more on the sort of half glass empty, really. But what we have here, I think, in, in this sort of debate is this idea that the glass is refillable. And I think this is a, a point to sort of maybe finish on uh, broadly. Our school leaders and the people involved in supporting education uh, you probably like the jug of water here. Uh, in refilling the emotional reserves of others, the glass, and in giving them professional advice, you always find yourself giving of yourself. And that is a drain on yourself emotionally and physically as well. But as the jug, that jug needs to be refilled as well. And, you know, we all need, to, as jugs, need to go away and, and be refilled with our emotional reserves, uh, with whatever works for you in that sort of... Um, pastiche of uh, approaches in that typology I uh, referenced earlier. And again, you know, I, I plagiarized uh, this one here uh, from someone. The uh, the mobile phone, uh, the smartphone does some wonderful things for us uh, on a day-to-day -day basis with apps and so on, but runs out of juice quite quickly, doesn't it? So again, that, that phone to be as good as it was uh, the day before needs to be recharged. So my message to you today, uh, kind of, uh, listeners to the presentation is uh, thank you for listening. Uh, I wish you every luck in your work and in your mission and in your vocation around education. But I would, with this slide in front of us, urge you to look after yourselves uh, so that you can look after other people who are um, important to you, friends, family and work colleagues and, and critically the young people in our care. Please um, refill the jug. Please reboot yourself um, and uh, as well and recharge in whatever way works for you. So uh, with, with those uh, words, I will uh, draw the, um, uh, the presentation to a close, Jen, and I'm more than happy to take questions. Thank you. Um, thank you so much for that, Aaron. Um, some very sound advice at the end there, but also really fascinating um, to hear you know, a really practical, you know, to hear the thinking behind your approach um, to a wider well-being programme, um, you know, the thinking that went behind it, the sources that you drew on, etc. Really, really interesting. Um, I'd like to encourage um, participants to put questions um, in the chat box. We do have um, one that's come in from Mike Madigan from Welsh Government who asks, do you find that both teacher and learner well-being improvements have a positive effect on workload? Do you have any views on that, Aaron? Yeah, I, I think they're, in, they're part of the same circle. Um, um, obviously, 
if you if you've got well being uh, sorted, um, you know, routinely and on a day to day basis, I think your capacity to take uh, work on, you know, you can absorb that, but there is a limit to that. I would argue, and workload, you know, and uh, well being are interchangeable. There's a big debate around workload. Um, there has been in the profession for many, many years, um, you know, from, from, from sort of the early noughties onwards, really. Uh, I do worry uh, at the moment that the workload is um, very substantial. You know, head teachers will be working probably 70 or 80 hours a week, every week for, um, for weeks on end. You know, and that's clearly a, a massive load uh, of work. And classroom practitioners may work 55 uh, and, 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 uh, to 65 hours as well. Now, you know, we need to put down the pressure on that. And I, I think it comes back to the prioritization uh, there and um, really giving an idea to the profession. And I would, you know, uh, applaud uh, this uh, also coming from Welsh Government about what we can put to one side. Uh, the, the inspectorate in Wales have been very understanding and there's been that sort of suspension of, of um, inspections but schools who are in a category want to come out because that's a stressor in itself so um you know we do need to put down the pressure on workload but you know if the school is happy and the school is uh, running like a watch if, if we put um, covid to one side um, i always used to think that if we had a, a smooth working day that everybody then um you know whatever workload they had they could do that better and more effective so i think you, you know uh, it, it's not only about how much you do, it's about how well you do it. And teachers and professionals really need that space. It's at a premium at the moment, especially with the COVID situation, when, as I said before, 80% um, plus of the time is looking at track and trace. And um, do I have enough staff to cover these lessons? Oh, that group has to go off. There was an incident on the bus with track and trace and so on. So that's a major, major at the moment. As officers, we're finding this um, period as challenging, if not more challenging, than lockdown itself. Um, thank you for that. And, and it was interesting to hear that your um, presentation included a focus on the role of governors, um, particularly in supporting um, head teachers. And that's something that has come up a couple of times in other sessions today. Do, do, you, think, do you think there's a big part to play there in strengthening that relationship, especially in terms of, of um, well-being consideration? Uh, absolutely. I, I, I think, you know, um, back in the day, sometimes you had governing bodies where the, where the head uh, teacher was the font of all knowledge and uh, governors would, you know, um, meekly follow uh, in a given direction. I think uh, in Wales, governors um, involvement in school has developed over time. Um, and, you know, as, uh, in my experience, they're, they're very well meaning individuals. They are also, um, you know, able people. They bring a fantastic skill set into the schools. Some uh, work in business, others work in social care, others, uh, you know, uh, maybe doing some, something else. So the skill set you have around the governor's table is absolutely um, vital for um, a school leader. And they're there to be critical friends uh, in terms of standards and so on. And the role of the, um, uh, the governors has become more prominent with encouragement from the school inspectorate as well, because governors are also inspected as part of, of, of that. But I think the well-being side of it, um, you know, it's probably happened, um, um, you know, it's probably happened informally over the years, certainly. But, um, you know, we're, we're bringing it in formally into sharp focus now that we need to be actively supporting the head teacher's well-being here. Uh, as I say, there were times I had to draw on my, school, uh, my, my uh, chair of governors. Um, I remember something breaking in the, in the press, which was unwarranted about the school, but it was very, very hurtful for the school community. And I remember my school, uh, my chair saying, oh, don't worry, it'll be, chip, uh, it'll be a chip paper tomorrow and so on. So, you know, and, um, you know, you, I think there are two, on two levels, I think, to conclude on, to, on this question. A, um, I think you can generically, as a governor, support uh, staff here, and staff can be uh, governors can be trained and supported in that role. But a head can also tap tap into those personal qualities those um, governors have and their professional background. As I say, 
you know, um, balancing the school budget. I had a terrific businessman who would, uh, you know, help me cut costs uh, and, and, and so on and so forth. So you can, you, 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 on, on a personal level, on a professional level in terms of their expertise and generically, I think there is, it's, it's a fertile area to explore further going forward. Yeah, yeah, I would absolutely agree with that. Um, I would just like to say again, thank you to Aaron. We've had some positive comments um, and some thank yous in, in the chat. Um, I've also posted up um, a link to a very short survey that um, I'd like to encourage you to fill in. Um, it will also ask you about sources of support that are available to you um, and give us some material to think about what types of sessions might be useful um, to you in the future. Um, this was the last session um, of the day. Um, I think it's been a good and productive day and I really very much hope that um, you've all um, taken lots away from it. Um, please do get in touch with us if there is any feedback, do it, please do it through the feedback form or you're very welcome to contact me um, directly. Um, and all that remains is to wish you all a very, very pleasant evening and uh, weekend when it finally arrives. Thank you very much, everyone. Yeah, thank you all.